So now straight over to Ollie Martins. Welcome. Hi TJ. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Brilliant. Um, first question. Do you listen to 106.5 Interbeats FM? Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes. Have I'm, you started? I'm an eclectic listener, so I like listening to lots of different sorts of music and uh, this is one of them. Okay then. Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, we, well, many of us know that you are the Police and Crime Commissioner for the Bedfordshire region, or county rather. Um, you were elected on the 17th of November 2012. 15th, that's close enough. 15th. How has it been since then? What, like, how has the role been? It's a very new role. Been, um, it's been pretty hectic, um, it's been on quite a steep learning curve, what? Um, but uh, overall it's a, it's a great job, um, you know, and I feel, uh, feel really privileged to, uh, to be the Police and Crime Commissioner in Bedfordshire. Brilliant. Okay, so um, I would like to ask, what are your main objectives as as the police and crime commissioner you have overall say to what the police force in Bedfordshire do. What's your main objective? Uh, well the plan that I'm going to be publishing shortly um, it has three strands to it so the first is protecting the public, the second is partnership working and the third is preventing crime. Um, in terms of protecting the public um, what I want to see is, uh, or what I talk about, is building more confident communities in Bedfordshire. So I think what we need to see is a stronger relationship between local communities and their police, uh, because that's how I think of it. You know, it is the the police in Bedfordshire are the people's police, um, and we need a strong link. And that's the way that I think we're going to deliver um, a safer, um, a safer county with with less crime. Okay. Strong links are are based upon relationships. Um, I'd like to ask: Have you watched the documentary by Adam Deacon? Can we trust the police? I haven't, but I've heard about it. Um, in in that documentary, um, there is arguments for the statement, as yes, we can trust the police, and arguments against the statement. How would you? Or what would you say and how would you help convince the, the local residents of Bedfordshire that it's a new time, it's a new structure of the police and we can trust the police now? Yeah, well I think, I think the role of a police and crime commissioner is to strengthen that link between um, local people and their police. Um, and uh, you know, I do that by holding holding the police uh, or holding the chief constable accountable for the, the delivery of the force, um, and making sure that uh, that people's priorities are the are the police's priorities and that they're that they're delivering on those. Um, but you know, I don't uh, I don't deny that there is um, there's certainly some work to do to build up the confidence that communities have in the police. Uh, and it's going to be a two-way process. So, you know, on the one hand, I'm asking communities to have more confidence in the police, but on the other hand, I'm asking the police to work harder to build up that confidence and to make sure that they are delivering for people and being uh, focused on, you know, victims' needs um, in, in the way that they go about their daily business. What are we... What is available for residents of Bedfordshire to get their their opinions and their voices across to the police in a, in, in a form of um, focus groups and stuff like that? Uh, well, I've been going around the county um, holding uh, regular meetings with, uh, with different communities. Um, I've also, I'm also on Twitter. Um, I've also got a website that people can contact me through. Um, so you know there are a range of uh, there are a range of uh, methods available to people to contact uh, to contact me and feed their views in, and that's very important. You know, uh, one of the one of the things that I've done an awful lot of since I was elected is consulting people and listening to people, uh, and I see that as a very important part of my role. 
IAG, Independent Advisory Group. How does that help, or how does that help hold the police to some sort, some sense of accountability? And how do, how do their their discussions and their opinion feed into the police actions? Uh, well, as police and crime commissioner, uh, my role is quite strategic in terms of setting the police's priorities and the independent advisory group then provides support in terms of the operational functioning of the police. So when the police are running a particular operation they will consult the IAG which are representative of uh, all the different parts of, uh, of our local communities. Okay. I would like to ask, how are the police involving young people um, in, in today's society where there's quite a lot of tension between young people and the police? How, are we, how, how is the police reducing that tension? Well, I think um, one, of the, um, on, one of the important ways of bringing uh, young people on, into contact on. with the police and uh, the police into contact with young people is the cadet scheme that the police run. Um, and I'm very keen on, uh, on making sure that uh, that, that cadet scheme um, does reflect the, di the diversity of our, of our different communities. Um, because diversity, I mean, it's, it's certainly true to say that diversity within the police is a challenge. Uh, and I think the way in which we can address that in the short term is through the volunteering opportunities that I'm able to offer. Um, and that the police are able to offer. So that's the, the cadet scheme in, in terms of young people. Uh, very keen that people have a look at that and, uh, and get involved with that. Uh, then there's the opportunity to be a special constable. Um, that's for people, uh, so the cadets are for 16 to 18 year olds. Once you're 18 you can consider becoming a special constable. Uh, which is a, a volunteer police officer, but you have all the same uh, uniform, equipment and powers as a regular police officer. And we've got some very good special constables in the, in the county, and I'm keen to expand that. Um, and then there's also, uh, we also have uh, other volunteering opportunities through the Neighbourhood Watch Scheme and uh, the Home Watch and Speed Watch and, and those sort of schemes. People getting involved in their own local communities and helping to make them safer. That's good. What message would you like to leave the listeners with today? Um, well, I think the key message is that uh, if we work together and we build that strong link between uh, the public and their police, uh, then that is the way in which we can tackle the serious crime issues that we do have um, and make our county safer. Uh, but it is through that collaborative approach of trusting one another and building up that strong link that we're going to get make the county safer. Thank you very much, Ollie Martins, for being with us today. Would I ask, kindly ask you to introduce our next song, please? Sure, TJ. Well, this is the PCC, Ollie Martins, bringing you Ollie Murr's Troublemaker. This is in, and we've got still got the Police and Crime Commission in, and I'd like to ask or pose the questions from the text to the police and crime commissioner. Uh, the first question is from 366. Is the volunteer position of um, volunteer police and ca cadets, is that a way into the police service? It, it is, yeah, yeah. Because at, at the moment, because of the cuts that you've, uh, you've rightly mentioned, the police in Bedfordshire uh, aren't recruiting new officers. Uh, and in fact we're, we're losing officers overall. Um, but we do still have these opportunities to volunteer with the police, that's with the cadets and the special constables. And I think that as well as providing a useful service, what these voluntary opportunities also do is give people the skills and experience that will put them in a very good place for when we are recruiting again for, uh, for full-time positions. How would you respond to the text that we received regarding the police service not being an honourable job? Uh, well, I think it is, I think it is an honourable job. Um, I mean, as you, as you described, uh, people are out there uh, doing, a, doing a good job, uh, protecting people from crime and uh, connecting with those local communities. Um, and I think, you know, that is a, that is a pretty honourable uh, sort of uh, profession. 
Would you like to elaborate on on your message to the local community of Bedfordshire on what is your main aims? Well, in terms of building confident communities, yes. Uh, I mean, what I what I envisage is uh, a, a strong partnership between local communities and and the police, where there is a two way. Um, exchange of information where people have got confidence to report crimes to the police because they know they'll get a, a, the response that they need and where if they've got uh, intelligence on criminal activity they'll also uh, be prepared to pass that into the police because they know that that criminal activity needs to be dealt with um, and that it, if it isn't then it's having a detrimental effect on our, on our communities.